take you through some things, but of course okay. you can obviously touch things too, right? Yep. Um, so obviously we have the panel screen, the team took you through a lot of that. Right now what we're showing on here is uh, obviously your audio music with uh, maps up here. We have weather and then we have climate and then we have driver information up in front of you. D-pads here, right? They're allowing you to kind of control your, your audio right now because audio is playing. You have your voice here. And then over here is driver information, so your blue cruise. So when you touch the pad, yep. it, it'll pop up yep. The, yep. on the screen. You can go ahead and there. touch it if you want. Just kind of rub your finger on there, right? And it kind of will just come up, right? So as you move your finger, yep. there you go. So that's all your driver. And then that side's like audio stuff, right? Okay. So that's the kind of gist there. Um, when we come down to the center location, we kind of have a little bar here, right? So my phone is connected right now. So CarPlay is going here right now. I'll get into that in a second, but essentially you have a home button. So you got maps, you got your audio, you got my phone, and then this is my profile image and you can change the profile image. You can connect multiple phones and switch that. You can control your audio right here. You can make this a big map if you want to, or you can do search, um, depending upon what you want down here. So you just click on that and then it becomes a full map if you want that view. So very customizable to be that. So that's your home place. The vehicle icons, all your vehicle information, so the things you guys are familiar with today, settings, seat information, drive modes, ambient lighting. This is Lincoln, so it has digital scent. Um, so that's your vehicle icons. Then you come in here and we have apps, right? So we have a bunch of apps in here. Um, they kind of went through a little bit. I won't dive into yeah, it. You can deep. log into your Google account. Log into and your Google account, right? Apps. You got a Play Store, right? And because it's your account, you'll have a bunch of things in here that you can download. Um, it'll be all of your kind of stuff. Um, and then we have some embedded apps that are kind of unique just to Ford. And then here's your configurator, right? So this is, now, you see those all highlighted. So now what's happened is I can control this. I can configure this how I want. I can drag things down. I don't want audio up there. Maybe I want trim for information up there. Maybe I don't want anything up there at all, right? And mm -hmm. so when I do that, right? Um, and then I go back to home. Now I just have that. And that's customizable by your profile. So the last thing I do in my profile, when I get out of this vehicle, I get back in, no, that stuff will be there. And so that can be tied to either your your key fob or your phone if you've yep. used the phone as a key yep. Yep. setup. Yep, absolutely. And so then so that absolutely. And then if you get in here and my key my key fob's in here, but let's say my wife wants her stuff, she would just come in here and she would just change profiles. Okay. Right. And then her stuff would come up. So absolutely. So I'll go back to that real again uh, real quick. Um, so like I said, you know, put weather up here and a lot of people, a lot of the customers like the audio. Um, so that's kind of the little generic thing we go with. So you have that capability. I think some of the other major things is you have this navigation up here. And so if we go, you know, say, uh, okay, Google, route to home. Your home is eight minutes from here. So that goes ahead and routes. So now the thing is, is I've got navigation up here. A lot of people be like, okay, well, I have a different view down here, which is kind of cool, but really... The, the, Can you move the, na the map into the position directly in front of the driver? No, this is map is stationary. Okay. Uh, stationary here for right now. Um, the key here, though, is that people are like, okay, yes, I have a map down here. This is great. But one of the critical things here is that I can actually go here and I actually can have my audio, but I still have navigation. So in a traditional vehicle, if you want to change audio, you got to move navigation away. I missed that turn. So you have this flexibility with these screens, right? To have content up here that you don't want to lose while you can have additional content down here. Uh, so again, this is CarPlay. So you're kind of seeing this is the CarPlay environment, right? So I can make CarPlay the full screen down here. Um, that is embedded Google Maps. But the idea is if I come into CarPlay, right? And I'm a CarPlay person and I do search and I do gas stations, let's say, and I do this marathon and I hit go, what you're gonna see is now Starting this is Apple Maps. Okay, so now it, it switches to projecting yep. the Apple Maps. Projected Apple Maps, the yep, American up there. Road. And so then it's That's Spotify, my music, my phone. So now I'm in my completely CarPlay projected experience. Okay. And again, how you get into that, right, is you have this little icon. If my oh. phone wasn't here, there'd be no icon there. Right. If I had a Google phone or an Android phone. It would show the Android Auto Absolutely. logo on there. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. So that's a lot of it, right? Like I said, there's a, a, pl a plethora of voice applications. You can use voice to control audio, climate. Um, you can use voice um, for some of the uh, uh, capabilities inside the vehicle that you guys are very familiar with. So that's a lot of the, uh, the experience that we have here. So on vehicles that have this coast to coast mm -hmm. screen on here, um, they will, will they also have any uh, heads up display capability or is that something that you're moving away from when with this configuration uh yeah so right now so like this vehicle that's launching for with it first right now uh, that you're seeing right here does not have a heads-up display configuration okay. in it uh right now because we're using this as panoramic screen i think that we are thinking about 
how do those two marry together, right? And uh -huh. so it's definitely something that we're investigating right now on do you have a heads up display with this panel or are they redundant, right? Because if you think about the heads up display, it's mostly like speedo, navigation, audio. Uh -huh. We have majority of that stuff already up here. So do we need a heads up display? Right. And it's it's close, you know, it's close to where the HUD would be displayed anyway, just a little bit lower than where yep. your normal yep. HUD display would be. I think Maybe one thing that might be nice is, you know, you've got these augmented reality HUDs that are coming to market, yep. you know, having something like that that can project uh, your your navigation prompts. Yep. And so it appears to be right over the intersection where you're supposed to turn. Yeah, yeah no, it's, it's a good point. I think like, you know, right now for this vehicle, this is what we're, we're going with, but uh -huh. it's definitely to things you're making, the points you're making, those are good points. And those are things we're certainly thinking about. Okay. And of course, this is, in this vehicle here, the the new Nautilus, this is the Lincoln Digital Experience. So, you're, uh, is is the the Sync branding going away with this new generation? Uh, it's a good question. You'd have to ask Alan that for sure. Okay. I, I don't know what what they're doing or where they're going with with Sync, um, mm -hmm. uh, and if that's going to be utilized with with this, I'll call it vehicle or this digital experience setup. So. But I can definitely uh, pull Alan to, to help answer okay. that question. And I guess uh, the last question I have, you know, it's just with having the widgets over on the right hand side yep. of the screen, you know, they're, you know, you're you're looking, the driver's looking away from the road when yep. they look at that. I mean, it's obviously still up up fairly high, but you are looking away from the road. Uh, and I'm just wondering, you know, how that, how that, I assume you know, you've done some studies in yep. terms of how. Yep. How often people would be looking over there, yeah. you know, and how much um, attention it's taking away from their the road uh, for a driver. Yeah, we've done a lot of work into it, a lot of research into it, and this is why we're doing these what what I would call these really kind of glanceable, quick item things, mm -hmm. right? And so that um, there is a statistic out there. I don't know the number off my head, right? But we 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 there are people within the organization yeah. that are looking at what is the appropriate time that someone can look away uh -huh. within milliseconds or a couple seconds to where their focus is not taken away from what they're doing driving. So when we designed these glanceables and looked into this, we had that forethought when we were thinking about those experiences. Okay, and, oh sorry, one, one, yeah. one last one. Uh, you know, Apple has talked a lot about their, their next generation CarPlay yep. experience. Um, is that something that's going to eventually be supported as part of the, the, the new uh, Ford and Lincoln digital experience? Yeah, what I can say about that is that we have a close relationship with Apple mm -hmm. and we're certainly talking to Apple about the opportunities um, uh, with them and their digital experiences. All right, great. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank you.